What's up, Assassins? If you're here, that means you're trying to start a home studio. And not just any old studio, but a quality home studio. Now, before we start getting deep in, we gotta figure out your why. Once we figure out your why, then we know the driving force behind everything that you do. Now, before we start getting super deep into it, I wanna ask you six questions. And on top of those six questions, I got more questions to ask you. So, let's dive right in. Question one. Are you making an album and you just don't want to pay for studio time? Well, I want you to consider this. Why? <laughs> it's just that simple. Why don't you want to pay for studio time? Is it because you don't have the funds? Is it because you had a bad experience? Is it because you didn't like the engineer? Is it because you couldn't afford it? Like what is the why that you want to start recording at home instead of going to another studio while you're working on your singles or your albums? Another thing to consider is, do you have the equipment? Do you know what it takes to record yourself? Do you have the microphone, the XLR, the audio interface? How much are you spending on those? Because quality is key. Now, anybody can record with any type of equipment, but we're talking about quality, not just any quality when it comes to recording our music. So I wanna ask you again, do you have the equipment to go? Now, one more thing I want you to consider is, do you have an engineer or are you doing it yourself? If you're doing it yourself, do you have the time to learn and to put in? How long are you putting it in? Is it conflicting with your music making? Is it cheaper just to get an engineer? Are they available? How much are they charging? I just want you to take some time to consider all these things if you're not paying for studio time. Now question number two, are you a writer or artist who wants to record every time they have the idea strike? I have clients who has their own home studio. They like the idea of recording anytime they want to. Not having to pay for the time and not having to wait until next week or hours later or days later to go ahead and record their, their magic because energy dies. So in that, I do want to also ask you a couple of questions. When you go to a professional studio after you lay down your delivery, your cadence, your timing, and so on and so forth. If you're not, are you recording at home? Do you have the equipment? What kind of quality are you delivering to your audience once it's done? Now people always have the misconception that says people just need to hear my music and they'll fall in love. Well, that's not always the case. People like to hear quality music. People like to hear music they can hear and they can understand. And if you can't offer that, then you might want to take the option to go to a professional studio to record your professional quality after you lay down all your fundamentals and foundations at your own home studio. I want to ask you another question. Do you have an engineer? Do you have a team? How are you learning your doll? Are you doing it? Do you have the time? Just as I asked another question, do you have the time for it? Now be honest with yourself. How much time are you actually putting in? An hour, 30 minutes, two hours? And I got one more thing I want you to consider is how quickly are you moving on your idea? Now, once you get your idea in your head at two, three o'clock in the morning, if you have to rush downstairs or rush next door to go ahead and start recording yourself, and it's only you who's doing a recording, do you know how to use your DAW properly? And what I mean DAW is Digital Audio Workstation, your Pro Tools, your FL, your, your Studio One, Ableton, so on and so forth. Do you know how to use that and get a good clean recording without messing yourself up? I want you to consider those things as well. Let's move on to another question. Are you the only studio in your area and you wanna offer something that nobody else is offering? Well, I want to ask you, who is the space for? Is it for R&B artists? Is it for trap artists? Is it for everybody? Do you have the experience to work with everybody if you say everybody? Because that's the typical answer everybody gives. Oh, I can work with everybody. Mm, not really. <laughs> Listen, if your background is in trap and everybody in your area is recording pop music, you're going to be a fish out of water. And if you want to make your studio succeed, you're gonna to have to start from the bottom up and start recording folks for free to get the experience and then start charging them slowly but surely. And then your studio will get more popping. But even at that point, I wanna ask you, 
what are you doing in your studio that sets you apart from somebody else who's going to drive, you know, maybe two hours? I had a client who DM'd me on Instagram and said, look, I want to come to your studio in Atlanta. I asked him where he was from. He said, y'all, I'm in Texas. I said, like, wow, that's about seven and a half, eight hours. He was like, yeah, because the closest studio to me is about two and a half, three hours. We got to make a whole day out of it. So, I might as well come to Atlanta and get professional quality if I'm going to spend the whole day somewhere else. I can't argue with him. If I was in his situation, I probably would have done the same thing had I had the time and opportunity to. And I asked him, why would you drive to my studio as opposed to just driving us three hours? I was very curious. And he said, because I liked your content that you were putting out. I liked the experience. I liked what you were talking about. And I want to give your studio a try. Now, that leads me to my question. What are you offering that is setting you apart when you open up your studio? Why would somebody drive 30 minutes to your studio as opposed to driving two hours to another studio? If I drive 30 minutes to your studio and I see a laptop and a $100 microphone, and no treatment or anything else, I'm walking out of there. I'm gonna be very, very upset that I came to your spot and this is the way you treated me when I came in here. I'd rather drive those three hours. I'm, I know I'm getting professional quality. What type of image are you putting together? What type of quality are you offering? Let me ask you another thing. And the same question goes back to you that asks everybody else. Do you have the equipment? Do you have the team? Another question I want to ask, are you an engineer who feels like they can offer more or a studio owner who feels like they can offer more? What are you offering that rivals other studios around you? Now let's say you're charging $40 an hour. The other studios around you are charging 40, 30, 50, and 60. Now ask yourself, are you offering more or are you offering less? Now if you're offering less, what do you need to do to offer more? What are they doing that you're not doing? And if you're offering more, then ask yourself, how are they getting clientele and you're not? Because clearly if you're offering more, people should be coming to you more often. Now, I also want you to consider this. Are you prepared to work from the bottom up to get your name out? You may have intern at another studio or worked at another studio and although those places may be good or bad they had their own clientele when you decided to leave did that clientele come with you did one person come did two people come do you have good testimonials behind you do you have good referrals that say yes this is the guy I want to work with yes you should go work with that guy what is bringing people to you if you worked at these other studios, how are they finding you? Why should they come to you? And did you leave a good impression and a good experience with them? So I want you to take time to think about that. My next question is this. Do you want to open up your own home studio because you want to record one specific genre or two specific genres? Now, there's a lot of folks who have Christian based studios, Muslim based studios, so on and so forth. Or they have trap based studios, R&B based studios, pop based studios, rock based studios. Where are you at? Be honest with yourself where you're at. What do you want to do? And do you have the experience to offer that? You might only be recording trap artists day and night, day and night, day and night, but you really love K-pop. It happens. Well, I want you to consider this. What is the demand around your area? Is it trap? Is it K-pop? Is it pop? Is it rock? Is it acoustic? What is the demand? Can you offer that experience? Is there K-pop in your area? If there's not K-pop in your area, then you may have to reevaluate what you're doing and how you're pivoting. It may require you to go to different states or different countries to live out what you want to live out. Last question. Do you have the space and you just want to make extra income? What's the motivation behind it? Are you motivated by the money? You know, are you making it for yourself, for your team, for an artist that you really want to sign or that you have signed? Who's running the studio? If you're running the studio, do you have the experience to handle the engineer, to handle the artist, to handle the equipment? Do you know what you're buying? 
Do you know what you're doing? If not, do you have a team ready? Then these are all things that I just talked about that I want you to consider. Some of these things may have opened up your mind so you can think about it in further detail. And other things might have been clarification that you needed. Either way, hit that like and subscribe button because I know you want to hear more of me and I definitely want to hear more of you. So let me know in the comments how I can add more value to your life. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for rocking with me. And I'll see you again on the next episode. Peace. Ninja,